Pokemon Journeys Season 2 is going to drop on Netflix in not too long. That means we have to talk about all the Easter eggs in Season 1. Be sure to watch till the end for a hint about where Journeys might be headed. In the first episode of Journeys, there are a lot of references to the first episode of the original anime. Ash was really excited to go to Professor Oaks, just like in the first episode. Unfortunately for Ash, he made the same mistake in the past as he did right before he started his Pokemon adventure. If you haven't watched it in a while, Ash only got his Pikachu because he overslept and missed out on getting one of the three starter Pokemon. The same thing happens in Journeys, only this time he misses out on the entire Pokemon camp. Now, it looks like Ash has every piece of Pokemon merchandise in the world. Do they not make, like, alarm clocks that look like a Magnemite or something? Ash's Pallet Town bedroom is a treasure trove of cool Pokemon merchandise. From the second you see it, you immediately know where Ash's deep passion for Pokemon comes from. Ash is quite literally living his childhood dream by training Pokemon and competing in tournaments. Journeys fans picked out a special Easter egg that makes Ash's bedroom even more special. When we see Ash sleeping next to his Pikachu in bed, he's got a certain Snorlax pillow. This is actually the exact same pillow that can be spotted in the first episode. It's such a throwaway little detail that could have been excluded without affecting the plot at all. Instead, they just decided to throw in a little gift to those those eagle-eyed Poké fans out there. The third episode of Journeys features a welcome return of the Pokémon Ivysaur and Venusaur. It's always great to see the series make good use of one of the original starter Pokémon. Poké fans never seem to get too much of Charmander, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and their evolutions. The third episode was also a reference to a classic Pokémon episode. Bulbasaur and the Hidden Village not only has a similar title to Venusaur's Mysterious Tower, but a similar story as well. Both feature Bulbasaur and its evolutions trying to deal with living in a human world. The episode was the perfect way to show fans that the series was going back to the same kinds of stories from the original anime. Plus, it's great that we actually got to see Bulbasaur's evolutions, considering the fact that Ashes never evolved at all. If you were a kid playing the original Pokémon Red, chances are that you came across the exact same frustration that I did. That stupid Snorlax that was in the middle of everything! Not only was the sleeping bear blocking the game's progression, but it also seemed noticeably larger than it should be. Journeys decided to poke fun at this concept from the original game by featuring a very similar plotline. This time, Snorlax has fallen asleep on some train tracks. Not only that, but he's now giant thanks to the new Dynamax concept in the show. This was the perfect way to really familiarize fans with this new concept while also throwing in a joke about Pokémon's past. If there was something refreshing to you about the first few episodes of Pokémon Journeys that you couldn't quite put your finger on, don't worry, you're not alone. There was something about the series that just struck a nerve for me that Pokémon hadn't for several years. That is because Journeys featured Generation 1 Pokémon who haven't appeared in the series for hundreds of episodes. Pokémon like Kakuna, Dodrio, Beedrill, Diglett, and Nidoran all appear in the first episode of the series after a long absence from all of them. If you played the original games, you recognize many of these as early Pokémon you come across as your journey begins. Journeys seems to know exactly how to scratch that nostalgia itch, and I'm here for it. Pokémon Journeys surprised everyone in its first episode by not focusing on Ash's new journey, but rather on the origins of the show's mascot and favorite Pokémon, Pikachu. This Pichu story gave us the long-awaited Pikachu's secret origin we didn't know we needed all this time! While it was a look at Pikachu's past, it still had hints about his future. There's a part where Pichu is beset upon by an Ekans and a coughing. These are the pre-evolutionary states of Arbok and Weezing. And those are the Pokémon that Jesse and James used, and thus served as Pikachu's primary antagonists. Oh, I could go on for an hour just about how cool I think Ash's pre-series room used to be. But that being said, the updates and journeys make Ash seem even cooler. It's filled with references for die-hard Pokémon fans. We see an Easter egg gold mine with so many of Ash's various badges, trophies, and awards over his long journey as a Pokémon trainer. This is simply a gift for all the fans who have stuck with the series through Orange Islands, the Sun and Moon. Now that Ash has finally won a conference, it's nice to be reminded that that's just one of his many accomplishments. Pokémon fans have a special eye for detail. 
When your love of your fandom starts from hours upon hours of looking at a dimly lit Game Boy screen, you really start to develop a keen eye. And that's how they were able to spot a very familiar construction site early on in Journeys. In the third episode of Journeys, there's a gym under construction in Vermilion City. Well, players of the original games might remember that there was also a construction site in Vermilion City that looked very similar. Though this gym does bear a striking resemblance to the gyms in a different Pokemon game, Pokemon Go. That is an Easter egg inside of an Easter egg right there. Go has a very special moment in Episode 6 of Journeys. Jazzed about his recent capture of Scorbunny, Go decides that it's time for him to capture a lot more Pokémon. He catches a wide variety of Bug-type Pokémon in a way that Ash never really tried to do. In many ways, this is when Go really became a Pokémon trainer. What he did was secretly even more impressive than that, though. You see, this is the first time a main character has captured more than two Pokémon in a long time. The last time wasn't even seen by many Pokémon fans out there. In Episode 10 of Journeys, Ash takes a big step towards building his new Pokémon roster. You see, it's a pretty common thing for Ash to basically send all of his Pokémon to Professor Oak and then start from scratch. This time, though, he got a pretty late start. When he catches a Dragonite, it really bucks a trend for Ash. He usually catches Pokémon pretty early on, but this time it takes him 10 whole episodes to get there. Not only that, but he rarely catches a fully evolved Pokémon. If you aren't a huge Pokémon fan, it's forgivable if you didn't recognize one of the competitors in the World Coronation series from the end of Season 1. You can kind of figure out who this character is from context, but die-hard fans know that this is Lance, the baddest guy in the Pokémon world. Well, in Kanto, at least. In the original anime, he was often doing cool things like infiltrating Team Rocket in disguise. Most notably, though, Lance was the champion of the Indigo League. He has appeared multiple times in the series, but this was probably one of his best matches ever. I was so incredibly excited to see Lance back in the middle of the action during the World Coronation series. Honestly, if we could get a spin-off where this elite trainer travels the world battling evil organizations, I'd watch it. Alas, it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. What did happen, however, is that Journeys dropped some powerful knowledge on us that you could almost miss. When Lance is introduced during his match against Leon, he is introduced not as the champion of the Indigo League, but merely as one of the Elite Four. This may imply that our dear Lance is not Kanto's crowned champion. Is it possible that another Kanto trainer has risen to Lance's level? If you haven't seen Pokémon in a long time, it's forgivable if Lance's Gyarados made you do a bit of a double-take. Instead of the normal blue Gyarados, he has a super-powerful red Gyarados. Don't worry, this has been explained in detail. You see, back when Lance was infiltrating Team Rocket like a boss, he came across their experiments to force Pokémon to evolve and thus make them more powerful. Lance's Gyarados evolved in this manner and retained its Magikarp red color because of it. He has used it many times since, but this was the first time we've seen it Dynamaxed. Was it really not scary enough, Lance? You had to go and make it giant? While Lance came out strong with his red Gyarados, that wasn't the Pokémon that ended up winning the day. No, that honor goes to Leon's Gigantamaxed Charizard. Seeing as Charizard is one of the most popular Pokémon of all time, it's not super surprising that he would be in play. That being said, could his inclusion be a hint about Ash's lineup? Ash's Charizard is one of his most dynamic Pokémon ever. It started out as a wounded, abandoned Charmander that Ash saved only for it to ignore his commands once it evolved to its final form. Then it left Ash once it found a sanctuary of sorts for Charizards. There it trained amongst its own kind until it became a lot more mature and powerful. Perhaps Ash's Charizard has been training to take on Leon's all this time without knowing it. During the big match between Leon and Lance, certain fans of the games may have noticed familiar things about their dialogue during battle. That's because several pieces of it were ripped right from their handheld appearances. If you pay close attention, you can hear them shouting out their pre- and post-battle phrases. These kinds of nods are great for the hardcore gamers who have kept Pokémon going all these years. 
Like Lance, Leon's cameo in the final episode of Journey Season 1 was a really big deal. Unlike Lance, however, this wasn't a beloved character returning, but one being introduced to the anime. You see, Leon is very much the Lance of the Galar region. He is the champion of the Pokémon League in Sword and Shield. So this match was more than just a showing of awesome Pokémon trainers, but a true clash of Pokémon titans. In Journeys, it's really the second episode that starts the adventure off, not the first. That's the one where Ash and Go come together and decide to travel through the Pokémon world. The way they bonded was probably one of the greatest moments in the series. One that definitely gave me nostalgia for one of my favorite Pokémon movies. Ash and Go riding on Lugia really reminded me of the movie Pokémon 2000, which featured Lugia heavily. Though, I have to say, it's always disappointing when he doesn't use his psychic powers to talk to people. It's almost like that was a convention they just made up for the movie. One of the most random surprises from Journeys came when Ash's mom's Mr. Mime, Mimey, joined Ash for an adventure this time. The Pokémon has been featured heavily in the series over the years, but only ever as an occasional comedic cameo. One of the reasons for his upgrade may have been Mr. Mime's darkly hilarious bit from the live-action film Detective Pikachu. The show even references the movie just a bit. If you look closely in Episode 7, you can see a moment where Mimey closely resembles his Detective Pikachu counterpart. Now we just need to wait for the hopefully inevitable Ryan Reynolds cameo. Go has some serious Ash Season 1 vibes going on right now. He's an ambitious Kanto kid who has something to prove to the entire world. Not only that, but he's shaping up to be a pretty solid Pokémon trainer in his own right. Some of his first catches directly reference the journey Ash made in the original series. Like Ash, Go catches a Caterpie as his second Pokémon. This is a direct callback to that classic episode. Who can forget the beautiful and mysterious moment in the original anime where Ash looked up at a rainbow and saw an unidentified legendary Pokémon? That Pokémon, who we now know as Ho-Oh, has been a recurring presence throughout the anime that signifies the beauty of Ash's journey. That is why it is so cool that Go had a very similar moment with a different legendary Pokémon. In the first episode of Journeys, Go happens upon a very familiar Pokémon who we hadn't seen in quite a while. Mew. This chance encounter started Go's entire journey, much in the same way that Ash's Ho-Oh one did. Though Ash didn't immediately set out to capture Ho-Oh. I guess some Pokémon trainers have crazier goals than others. There are few tropes in Pokémon that are as deeply ingrained in the series as the concept of the rival. Ash has had many, including Gary, Paul, and probably soon to be Leon. That's why it's no surprise that Journeys played with the idea of Go maybe having a rival in the seventh episode. He has all the marks of a good rival. He was abrasive and more than a little stylish. I don't know why, but the rivals always look a lot cooler than the main characters. This time, though, Hodge didn't stick around. He seemed to rush through the entire rival arc in one episode. It almost seems as if this could be a meta-commentary on the rival trope itself. Still, I hope Go gets a proper rival anyway. Go is quickly becoming one of the most popular of Ash's companions. Although he's not on that Brock level yet. Really, who is? In fact, many fans seem to think that Go may actually end up replacing Ash as the new protagonist of the series. If Ash were to win the World Coronation series and prove himself to be a Pokémon master at last, that would be a good place for a new character to jump in. There is one other aspect about Go that some fans think is noteworthy. He just so happens to share the same name as one of the most popular Pokémon games released in the last few years, Pokémon Go. This has led many fans to speculate whether or not Go was actually named for the popular game. As many people are obsessed with Pokémon Go, it would make sense to court those fans. There was another Go moment that reminded me personally of a different Pokémon game that is near and dear to my heart. Go carries around a camera to capture special Pokémon moments. This is very reminiscent of the cult classic Nintendo game Pokémon Snap. In that game, your objective isn't to battle or train Pokémon at all. No, instead, it is your mission to take cool pictures of them. Now, it might seem a bit quaint by modern standards, but during the N64's heyday, this was a pretty fun time. It seems as though Journeys will take any opportunity to take us back down memory lane. 
if Journeys is going to have a massive Mew-centric storyline, you know where the speculation is going to lead. Ever since the first Pokemon movie released, fans have been obsessed with its villain Mewtwo. The sympathetic psychic Pokemon has appeared in several of the movies, Detective Pikachu, and is even in Smash Bros. While all of that is impressive, he's actually not appeared in the anime all that much. Now that Go is looking to capture Mew, all of that could change. It is entirely possible that Team Rocket could reclaim Mewtwo, forcing Mew to battle its clone yet again. Perhaps Go will assist in some way that connects him to Mew and allows him to capture the legendary Pokémon. What is Pokémon without a mysterious, legendary Pokémon causing trouble? Journeys briefly introduced us to the latest in a long line of these uber-powerful Pokémon in just a few seconds at the end of Season 1. While we don't get to see much, we can identify which Pokémon it is. It is definitely Eternatus from Pokémon Sword and Shield. This incredibly powerful Pokémon serves as one of the game's greatest challenges and will likely be one of Ash's as well. Not only is it super powerful, but it can also go into an Eternamax form that's even more powerful. So watch out for upcoming seasons of Journeys, because Eternatus is coming. There you have it, all the greatest Pokémon Journeys Easter eggs. Were there any that we missed? Be sure to sound off in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Screen Rant for more Pokémon action.